angry guy here and men are abandoning the church and becoming passport bros as women flock to it, searching for husbands. Men are abandoning the church and becoming passport bros as women flock to it, searching for husbands. We're going to be looking at this. I want to show you guys a message that I actually got on one of my videos. I want to share this with you, and then we're going to share some other details. But this should really sh illustrate to you just how things are changing. This message came to me from Uri Andropov. And he said, angry guy. It is horribly bad in the dating and marriage scene. The other day, I was at my mom's church visiting. The only men who were present were the pastor and the two bishops. All the women were alone and unmarried, and the few with kids. It was so bad that the sermon changed to, to family and marriage. Now, some of the women are asking my mom if I am single or married. I told my mom to tell the ladies at her church that Lord told me to get my passport and bounce. Real talk. Well, thank you, Uri, for sharing that. And guys, I want you to really see that more and more men are, are, are basically leaving the church. I literally warned you. I said, guys, the church has been compromised. Don't go to the church. I said to you guys, they say, where two or three are gathered, let there be God. And I said, listen to what angry says, where there is one gathered with God in his heart, let there be God. All right? The church is compromised. It is not a place for you to go. It is not a place for you to for you to listen to the word of God anymore. It is a place where the sole intent is to suck wealth and resources out of you, to take advantage of you, to use you, and to get you to marry someone. The church has been infiltrated. And it just it didn't just happen overnight. All right? It's been ongoing. It is an ongoing issue. And you have to be aware of it. You have to be aware of it. This is not unique. This is something that men all over are facing now. Where women who have spent their better years having relationships with men who were not necessarily very good for them are now in their 30s and even 40s and sometimes 50s and they're looking for a good man. And they have become born-again Christians and born-again virgins. And now they are seeking out godly men. But in reality, what they're seeking out are men who have their lives together. What they're seeking out are plan B guys. What they're seeking out are you guys. And you have to be very, very careful. It's so incredible it's, uh, I say incredible, but it's, it's quite unbelievable. The rates at which men are walking away from society, Western society, going overseas and starting new lives. The passport bros are only growing. And boy, oh boy, are they growing rapidly. Men are rapidly checking out of society and they're checking out because society no longer works for them. Let's listen, to this. Let's listen to a bit of this video, which illustrates how men are not working anymore and why they're not working. You can't say that this men without work thing is because there isn't any work for the men. Millions and millions of those jobs are not for like hedge fund managers or you know chemical engineers. A lot of jobs where the main qualification is showing up on time every day, not stoned. And even so, employers have not been able to fill these millions and millions of extra jobs. How did you come upon the topic of male unemployment? 
Uh, I make my living off of uh, finding things that are hiding in plain sight. I've been doing this for over 40 years. Uh, started during the Cold War, uh, looking at the Soviet health crisis, looked at problems of poverty in the U.S. This particular one came to me about 10 years ago when I was hearing happy talk about the uh, about the full employment or near full employment situation in the United States from the Federal Reserve, from politicians, from Wall Street. And I was also reading things which said that half of Americans said we were in a recession. So those two things don't really go together terribly well, do they? So I was thinking, so what's, what's the problem here? And I pulled on the thread and realized very quickly what the problem was. Our national employment statistics system was developed uh, to track the, uh, the Great Depression. And during the Great Depression times, you'd want to know how many people were unemployed. You'd want to know how many people were employed. And if a guy uh, was neither working nor looking for work, you wouldn't even think this would be a great, uh, <laughs> a great phenomenon. That it would be kind of like a, you know, a, little, a little bit of an end game. Today, it turns out that we've got four prime age men for the 25 to 54s, we've got four times as many guys who are neither working nor looking for work as actually unemployed, as out of a job and looking for a job. So if you're only looking at the unemployment number, you're missing four-fifths of the problem. That's how I stumbled across it. What does that turn into in terms of actual numbers? Well, uh, more than 7 million, I'll, I'll get really nerdy on you, um, more than 7 million men between the ages of 25 and 54, the prime ages for obvious reasons, um, who are in the civilian non-institutional population. Civilian, because we're not counting military, non-institution, because we're not counting prisoners or people who are in you know, mental or health facilities. And other people who could reasonably be expected to be in the workforce looking for a job. What sort of men are in this group? Demographically, education, family structure, ethnicity, who makes up this group? Well, as you would guess, Greg, uh, if there are 7 million guys, there's some of everything, right? <laughs> That's a big number. But some are more in represented than others. So <clears throat> um, ethnically, African Americans are overrepresented, but if we go into the persons of color formulation, uh, Latinos and Asian Americans are underrepresented. So, uh, so for white, non-white, it's almost a wash. Um, Education is what you'd think. Uh, high school dropouts way overrepresented. Um, with just high school, quite overrepresented, but surprisingly large, um, we say, representation of uh, guys with college or even college degrees. 40% of this group has at least some college, and as I recall, about a fifth or a sixth are college grads. Uh, here's a funny one. Marital structure, family structure. Uh, it turns out that um, married guys, no matter what their ethnicity, uh, are way less likely to be in this pool. They're way more likely to be out looking for work or having work. Uh, guys who have never been married, way more likely to be in this pool. And it's not just uh, the, the wedding ring, although that obviously is a big predictor. If, you, uh, if you're living under the same roof with kids and you're a guy, you're way more likely to be looking for work. I mean, that kind of that's not surprising to me, but it's you know kind of like the provider effect or something. And last but not least, uh, the Census Bureau has something that they call nativity, which seems kind of weird to me. It sounds like a Christmas scene. Uh, it's what they mean is where you're born. Are you born overseas or native born? Uh, foreign born guys are way more likely to be not in this pool. Um, no matter what their ethnic background, uh, more likely than their counterparts. And that's not a surprise to me, and I'm sure it's not a surprise to you in particular, because people who come here from overseas are kind of motivated to do something here, and they're, they're more likely to be in the workforce. You know, guys, what this basically is telling us is that 
even even though almost half of this group are men who are college educated, they are choosing not to work and to walk away from what would be characterized as a as as jobs that are not meaningful to them. Men are walking away for a variety of reasons, but the pre- predominant reasons are men are doing more with less. Men don't need a lot to survive. And statistically, what they're finding is that these guys are spending six to seven hours a day playing video games and also getting a lot of sleep. So they're sleeping and they're playing video games. And that's the very much the structure of the lives of these men. They've opted out of society. They've opted out of the workforce. They're not marrying. They're not dating. They have no interest in doing these things. And instead, they're just focusing on doing a lot of nothing. This was only inevitable. A lot of these men feel disenfranchised by society. But there are also some, there are also men who are who are basically saying, if I don't want to marry, if I'm not going to marry and I'm not going to have children and I'm not going to date, then there's very little reason for me to work harder than I have to. Guys are already also looking at the relationships other guy other men have had. They're looking at the record high divorce rates. They're looking at the they're looking at the amount of money that they have to spend once married or just in a relationship. They're thinking about the cost benefit analysis. What do they gain from these relationships? What are they gaining as a result of these interactions? And they're coming to a conclusion: not much. In fact, it's a negative because I end up leaving with less less money, and lower self-esteem. And these guys are saying, well, you know what? It's not worth it. It's absolutely not worth it. So we're just going to walk away from Western society. We're not going to work if we don't have to. And we're only, and we're basically just going to lay around, play video games, and enjoy ourselves as much as possible. These men have basically become what are known as the beautiful ones. The beautiful ones were a group in the mouse utopia that basically opted out of society and just spent their time eating, sleeping, and taking care of their coats. They had these beautiful coats, and that was it. And they were not, they refused to, they refused to get into confrontations with other mice. They refused to participate in society. And they basically opted out entirely, and they would not, and they would not interact with others. They would just eat, sleep, and take care of their coats. All right, groom themselves, and they were known as the beautiful ones. All right, versus the other mice, and they literally did an experiment where they took the beautiful ones and they removed them from that environment within the mouse utopia, and then they tried to socialize them with other mice outside of the utopia and the beautiful ones refused to socialize because they had learned that socialization was something that led to stress problems and misery so they refused to socialize they refused to mate they refused to reintegrate into society and this is what is happening with these men who will refuse to reintegrate into society That's the whole situation. Men do not need much to survive. And we are witnessing the beginning, the changing with the change within Western society. Western society is on a massive decline. And what will end up happening over the next 30 years, 20 to 30 years, is we'll begin to see emerging societies that will begin to overshadow Western society. And the groundwork for that has already been laid and you're going to see a lot of that beginning to come to fruition within just a few years. And this will be in Southeast Asia. This will be in Africa. This will be in non-Western countries. This will be in India. There will be massive amounts of growth in developing countries. Countries that we call third world are really developing. And those developing countries will begin, the fruit. those fruits will begin to mature. And that maturation will result 
in significant prosperity and opportunity for those that are invested in those economies and those societies. And a lot of these password bros are settling, they're putting boots on the ground and they are settling down and starting new lives within these, within these societies. And they are going to be the ones to benefit from this. Men are abandoning the church and becoming password bros as women flock to it, searching for husbands. What do you guys think about this? What are your feelings on this? You already know what I think, but what do you think? I want to hear in the comments from you. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away. And cheers.